Lucas Jolie here for the English Mixed Martial Arts Association today. Jordan Little's joining me, representing your country. Another one of the Warriors entering the Four Nations for Team England. Jordan, pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's good to talk. Yes, it's not far away now. We're in June, um, so less than a month until the big inaugural event in Liverpool. Uh, just first, like, kind of thoughts on the competition as an athlete? Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a, it's a big change-up and a big statement, especially in the UK. Um, we don't have anything... Well, we haven't had anything like this before where other countries have. We've, we've never hosted anything with IMAF. We've always had to travel. So I, I think it's a, it's a big statement and a big platform for other countries to see what we can bring. When you got the email saying, congratulations, Jordan, you're, you're going to be fighting for your country. How does that make you feel? Obviously, being to IMAF, um, obviously, you know about IMAF already, but like the fact that you, you're being able to represent your country is special, no? Oh, you know, it, it means more to me than almost anything. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to take it as a career and to be recognised and be selected to represent my country is, is a, it's a massive thing. Um, you know, not many people get to do that. And those that do sometimes might not seize the opportunity and I'm not going to miss that. What, what's your history then with IMAF, et cetera? And... Um, so I had my first fight in 2019 and um, I went to the English MMA Association trials in Manchester about six months later. Um, turned up for the trials, uh, went really well. Like I had one of those days where everything's just going my way. Um, I hadn't had enough fights, but they said to me, you know, if you can get some more in before the, the world championships come up, then, you know, you're in. So I kind of just racked them up. I think I had like two fights in a, like, in a row. And then two weeks later, I went out to, to Bahrain for the IMAS 2019 world championships, um, which was a hell of experience, which was cut short for me. Uh, I, I broke my left hand. Uh, I tried to carry on fighting, but uh, I got submitted. Uh, I, I couldn't do much with it, but. I want to go back and I want to do the Worlds again. I want to do the Euros and I, I want to make a big difference and kind of put myself out there and say, this is what I can do and this is where I belong. What did um, IMAF add to your amateur experience? For me, the World Championship showed me fighting on a different scale. It showed me what it can be like when you get to that higher level. Um, you know, the planning, the preparation, the, the, the levels that are there. It showed me that here in the UK, the levels are good, but also in other countries, there's other styles and the, the levels are just as high, if not higher at times. Um, so it gives you kind of that goal to say, OK, I don't want to just be the best in my country. I want to be the best in the world uh, before I go pro. And I want to rack up as many fights as possible before I go pro so that I have the experience behind me. What, what are your key attributes? Without giving too much away for the... The people you'll be fighting, um, who may or may not be watching, what what would you say you, you your strong points are? Um, I'd say I'm a well-rounded fighter. Like I, I, I'm comfortable in every area, but for me, stand up is kind of that that area where I have that little bit of an advantage, especially in the welterweight division, being six foot two. Yeah, I, I I find that I have that long range, and I'm not cutting any weight, so I'm not really draining myself. I walk around almost at weight. Um, my kicks, especially, are, my, my body's not very long, but my legs are all length. So if I can keep you on the outside and use my legs, then, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, explain that a bit more. Obviously, 6 to a well away, using long range, etc. Explain a bit a bit more about that. Okay, so um, with, with the majority of my fights, I've found that staying on the outside and using my long range kicks to keep them back and then picking my shots when I'm ready so that I'm dictating the range, I'm dictating when and how the, uh, like the confrontation in the moment happens, how we're going to connect. And that's allowed me to control the fight pretty much. And if they do shut down that range and they do get inside, they're surprised to find that actually my grappling and my grappling defense is quite strong. Um, I've been against guys a lot stronger than me, sorry, a lot stronger than me. And, um, bulkier than me like my, my last title defense was against a guy who cut a lot of weight and he was a big guy um, and all he wanted to do was wrestle with me um so every time I kept on the outside it worked and when he came in as soon as if he did get me down 
I was straight back up. I'm not staying on the floor. You're not getting your way. I'm going to bounce up and get straight back up and then use my range again. What would you say is in the way of you now turning pro? Is it wanting to get more experience with Team England? Yeah, um, it, it, there's a couple of things. One, it's just getting the experience. I want to go pro with as many fights behind me as possible. I don't want to just go in there and say, okay, let's go. And then throw myself in the deep end and not have the experience that others have. Because there's, there's amateurs that have 30 fights now. Yeah, you know, 30 plus fights. And they're going pro and they're absolutely demolishing the guys that have had four or five pro fights yeah. that are looking real good. And I, I think that's a big statement to, to go out there and say, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go pro now. And I'm going to beat the guy that everyone knows of, even though I'm not known enough. My amateur career is like strong. Um, like for me, I'm asked that my teammate um, is how I discovered what IMAF was, um, Christian Duncan. You know, he had a lot of amateur fights and he really got the experience in and he kind of put himself in situations that allowed him when he went pro to deal with that easier. And that's kind of what inspired me to do that. Yeah, he was kind of the underdog a, a lot of his M MMA pro career as well, which must be inspiring. Um, last question, just kind of any predictions for this? Do you expect to be going to the final fighting three times what what do you expect from the four nations out of your journey well there's only one goal and that's to make it to the final um i'll do whatever i have to do to get there um, but for me it's all about the experience and showing what i can do i don't want to just go out there and play it safe and be like okay i'm gonna hide i want people to know what i can do and what i can bring so that when i do go pro like there's more of a statement to it well, I really appreciate your time. It's been good to get some insight, good to get some of your thoughts on the Four Nations of the IMAFs and of your career, your background so far. So I'll be seeing you there. I'll be there and I can't wait to, to watch the action unfold. It'll be good to meet you. For sure, man. Thank you so much for your time.